grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please pray with me? Dear Father in heaven, we need your involvement. We need your power. We need your strength. And most of all, we need Jesus. And as we sometimes put off things that we know need to happen, we know that Jesus did not put it off. We know that Jesus did not set it aside. That all the beatings and all the accusations and all the things that He went through for us, He did it for us to save us so that we will live with Him, for Him, by Him, and to not put off things that need to be done but to live in grace and mercy. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. If you knew, that's a loaded statement, isn't it? If you knew what was going to happen next, if you knew that something was going to happen that needed to happen, if you knew something that you had to do that you really didn't want to do, that you really didn't you know what, I wish I could just put it off for a little while. You know when that happens, right? There's something that you need to do and you really don't really want to do it and so therefore you just think of something else or you just do something else in spite of yourself, in spite of what has to happen. There are some things that we inadvertently, for the lack of any better way, procrastinate. For example, you pull into the driveway on a Sunday afternoon and you see somebody has already put out their trash can for Monday morning. Oh, I can do that. I'll get that. I'll get that done. I'll get that done later. And you know what happens, right? Things happen. You end up like for example, who how many of you are golfers? How many going to be watching the Masters this afternoon? Uh, there's a few more of us. Yes, uh, I hope to, probably not. I got grass to cut today, don't I? I huh? See, I can't put that off. I got to cut the grass today. But sometimes you forget the garbage can and, and, you, and you think about it and it says, oh, okay, I'll get it later. And all of a sudden you hear at about 6.15 in the morning the garbage truck picking up everybody else's can but yours. Those are sometimes what I would consider the inadvertent procrastinations. But then there are the procrastinations we do deliberately. And if you knew what was going to happen, would you procrastinate doing it? For example, you're in a position of authority at work and you've got somebody who's just not cutting the mustard, just not making it, not doing his job, not doing his job well enough that needs to be done. And you know, you've warned this person over and over and over again, hey, you know what, you're on the verge, you're on the verge, got to get, get, get it together, and nothing happens. And you have to you say to yourself, I have to let this person go. But you don't want to. It's not something you relish, it's not something you want to do, but you know you need to have, you have to. So you put it off, you put it off, you put it off, you put it off, you, you find something else to do. And what ends up happening is something goes wrong, and then you finally have to do it. If you knew what was going to happen, would you procrastinate doing it? Today we celebrate Jesus rides into Jerusalem. We, sat our, we had our celebration, our hosannas, our children walked down the aisles waving, waving the palm branches. We waved our palm branches before our confession. It was a great celebration. Everybody knew that Jesus was coming, including Jesus. Jesus rides into Jerusalem to face brutality. Let's take a look at our Old Testament lesson uh, that was read just a few moments ago. 
Isaiah records this prophecy. The sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not drawn back. Jesus could have said, you know what? I know what God wants me to do. I know what the Father has called me to do. And I'm going into Jerusalem not only to fulfill all prophecy, but I'm also going to Jerusalem to to die. He had told his apostles ever since they came off the mountain of transfiguration until this very moment, he has told them over and over and over again, I must go into Jerusalem. I must be handed over and betrayed into the hands of sinful men. I must be crucified. I must die. And yes, also, I must rise again. He said that over and over and over. They didn't get it. Peter even said on the eve of his crucifixion, Lord, I'm I'm never going to let this happen to you. I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not going to run away from you. And Jesus calmly says, Peter, today before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. He knew it was coming. He knew it was coming. And as Isaiah writes, he describes in detail the brutality of, that was coming. He describes in brutality that Jesus must face his worst nightmare. Think about it as we look at our text again. I offered my back to those who beat me. Back in the day of the Roman Empire, they used a stone post, maybe about 36, 30 to 36 inches tall, about a four by four post. And on the one side of the post were iron shackles. And those whom they beat, they feet on one side, bent them over the post, hands shackled to the ground so they could not stand up, tore open their clothes, and literally came straight down on them. Thirty-nine times, tradition tells us. 39 times with a, with a standard whip, that's one thing. But evidence describes to us that it wasn't just a single whip. It was what we commonly refer to as a cat of nine tails. And not just leather tips. Leather tips with stone, metal, and other things to in, inflict br- brutality. Brutality designed to rip the skin and the muscle to shreds. I give my back to the beating. Jesus knew it was coming. Jesus knew that it was coming so well. After he, the Passover meal, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane with his twelve, and he stayed there, and he said, keep, I am here out of, oh, I am overwhelmed to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch. And he goes off into the cordon of Garden of Gethsemane and he prays this prayer. Father, if it is at all possible, take this cup from me. The weight, the huge, unimaginable weight of the sins of every single person, of every person that was to live into the future, every person of every generation from then until today, including ours, was crushing on Jesus. Jesus is saying, Father, if it is possible, please take this cup away from me. The weight of his sins was weighing on him so heavily that, and and in the Gospel of Luke, Luke records that he was literally sweating blood. The blood vessels in his forehead and his face were bursting, and the sweat mingled with blood was pouring down his face. He's basically saying, as what some things we might do, is that God, 
I don't want to do this. I don't want to go through this struggle. I know what's going to happen. I know the problems that are going to arise. Can I just avoid it? Can I just procrastinate it? Can I just put it off? And sometimes, many times, we do. Jesus, not only did he give his back to the smiters, he gave his cheeks to those who pulled out his beard. Now, it's not recorded in the Gospels, but it's possible it could have happened. It's been, it was done before that literally a, a Jewish leader would come and pull out the beard. Now, some of us cringe of having one hair pulled out with a pair of tweezers. I don't like it. Can you imagine somebody trying to pull your entire beard out of your face? I can't. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. If you are the Son of God, come down off that cross and we will believe in you. He saved others. Come on, let him save himself. Could Jesus have walked away from that? No. He could not. He did it to save us from our sins. He did it to save us. He endured hell on earth so that we would be forgiven. He did it. He faced it all so that we would have life, so that we will shout not only hosannas on, on Palm Sunday, but hosannas every day of our lives. He did it so that we would be freed from our sins and our sinfulness. He did it so that we would have life and have it to the full with Him. He did it for us to be with Him forever. Yes, He could have put it off, but He didn't. So, we live in His strength. Now let's go back to our temptations. Let's go back to our procrastinations and the opportunities that we have to do what we know needs to be done, but yet we keep putting it off and putting it off. How can we feed on what Jesus did and live for us? Well, one first thing is we live in His strength to give up procrastinating. Yes, sometimes it's challenging. Yes, sometimes there are things that we much rather never do or never have to do. But we live by the strength of God through Jesus Christ. We live by His grace. And yes, sometimes we have to do things that are not pleasing, but yet through the power of God we have strength to make it through. We have strength to have, and, and, and God gives us His Holy Spirit to make it through the struggles that we face. And we live in His strength to be strong and courageous. That's a quote from Joshua chapter 1. Here is Joshua. He's leading millions and millions of people. His calling now is to take the nation of Israel from the east side of the Jordan River onto the west side of the Jordan River into the promised land. And Joshua is going, I can't do this. The job is too overwhelming. The task is too difficult. I, can't, I, I, I don't know how Moses did it. I have no idea. I can't, I, I can't do it. And then God comes to Joshua just before and he says, Be of good courage. Be strong and courageous. Why? Because I am with you. Be strong and courageous to live out your life. Be strong and courageous to face the things that you're trying to avoid. Face it with the strength and the courage that God gives to you so that you will go through those challenges and into the next stage. Not to go around them, not to bypass them, but to go through them. Be strong and courageous, God says to you. 
to face the challenges that we sometimes would like to avoid. Be strong and courageous. And all God's children say, in the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And let us sing our song of response, Hosanna, praises rising.